Hi everyone, Star ASMR here, and uh, basically this video is going to be slightly different. You're at a weird angle here because I just want to show you one of the things that we're going to be working with today. Now, as some of you may or may not know, I play airsoft. It's like paintball, but with no paint. And instead of using the paintball markers, we use what could be considered as replica imitation firearms. Um, like this one. Now this is Tokyo Marui and it is based heavily off the M700 which itself was used to um, basically build the M24 sniper rifle for the uh, US military. Um, basically this is going to be a show and tell of some of the airsoft um, equipment that I have and um, the sounds that you can make with them um, so with that let's get on with it we're going to go back to my usual sitting down angle with the good old white wall um, this will probably be the only time that you actually see this in all its glory um, it's got a big ass suppressor on it bipod nice scope um, and yeah it's uh, actual weight and everything and it makes some great noises um, you may see the back portion of this for the rest of the video and also the front portion because we're going to be attaching and taking off the, the suppressor uh, the other um, airsoft equipment that we'll be using today is a um, KWA or a uh, ASG Glock 18C machine pistol and a uh, another Tokyo Marie um, P226 based on the 6 hour P226 enough of that, enough of the technicals, we'll just get on with the video, okay?
Okay, so we're back now in my usual seated position uh, on my sofa in the living room. Um, again, I've got the older, what I call the Dr. Dimitri shirt now. Um, it makes a lovely little noise when you move around with it. I'm sorry, that wasn't too great. So, yeah, Airsoft is a game of honour because there's no marker when you, you shoot and hit someone. You have to go completely off honour, basically. You feel it, you take it, you take the hit, and you announce it by putting your hand in the air and shouting, hit. doesn't always work that way, though. The, the, sometimes there are cheaters in the game and sometimes even when you do shout hit people keep shooting at you it's just one of those things so <clears throat> me and the m700 or the m24 whatever you want to call it i've only actually taken it out a few times there's a lot of places where me and my team play and most of them are, most of them are quite close quartered. Sorry, I must apologise as well. <laughs> Unlike normal, I'm filming this in the middle of the day. I normally film in the middle of the night, but today I've got some extra time, so I thought I'd do this video while I still had the uh, inclination to do it. Because again some people might find this a controversial topic to be talking about or at least waving replica firearms on the screen which they are technically classed as um, but a lot of people do show and tell things of you know, what's in my bag and makeup show and tell and you know all bits and bobs but this is what I do. This is what I'm interested in. So I thought I'd show you all. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> that didn't really help. Um, right. So yeah. So they've been out a few times. Because a lot of the places where my team play are close quarters. So quite up front. And because this is more powerful than um, a regular airsoft rifle they have a 60 foot minimum engagement rule so if anyone is within 60 foot off me I can't engage them with this so it's it's good for wood woodland outdoor um, gaming areas which are you know wide spaces um, it's bolt action, which means that every time you fire it off, you have to cock it, pull the bolt back, and what this does is it feeds a BB for the magazine, which goes here, up, and in. Close the bolt, lock it in, aim fire and then you have to go through the whole process again so <clears throat> that's the loud section of the video sort of done um, the camera which I use for my YouTube videos is fixed into the laptop right there so angling it is a pain in the butt so what I'm gonna do I stop the video here put a picture of the rifle onto the screen and then you're gonna hear me playing with the rifle for a bit more and then we're gonna swap to the side arms. Now I have two which I use. <clears throat> I've put one down somewhere, where's it gone? 
Hmm. Okay. Interesting. We'll share this one first. This is made by um, Tokyo Marui. Um, it's the first pistol which I ever purchased, and then immediately after buying it, I um, modified it slightly. So here it is. It's got ABS plastic upper receiver and lower receiver um, it's still got quite a good weight to it magazines BB slow down here Casco's in the bottom right there and load it cock it And it fires. Now, there's no gas in there at the moment. Um, or it'd be a lot louder, especially because of this device. <clears throat> it's called the Sound Hog. Is it Sound Hog? Noise Hog? Sound Hog. It looks like a suppressor, but it isn't. It makes it louder because everyone likes loud things. Kind of doing the pistol part right now, but just want to show you the breakdown and the modification that I did on it. We can come back to this later, but you know, I got ahead of myself. If anything, there we go. Spring and the bolt and bolt assembly. Sorry, I just completely made that up then. It's the barrel and the barrel assembly now. There we go. That's the inner barrel in all its glory. BBs go down there. And they come out that end. So that's the inner barrel. That's the outer barrel. Now this is the first extra part that I bought for it. It was a plastic one originally, ABS plastic. Um, and I bought the metal outer barrel because it had the threaded end on it. So I could fit things like suppressors because everyone likes a silent gun. They just sound more evil, I don't know. They certainly look the business anyway. This is very different to my um, Glock, which I'm about to show you. I've actually just forgotten how to put this back together. Brilliant. As you can already hear, some of the sounds that these things make. When done properly, I find them to be quite relaxing. That's when it's done properly, which I am definitely not doing right now. Right, I'm making an absolute hash of this. And I've just dropped it. I just dropped part of the assembly. Brilliant. Right, we'll end the video section here and we'll continue when I've found parts of the pistol and we have a play around with some of the noises. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, so now the monumental failure which was taken down of the P226 is over. We will continue with what I actually had planned for this video. So we're going to be making different sounds with the rifles, the metal sounds. Um, 
but because of the way that some of these are, they do make some amazing sounds. They relax me anyway. Now if that makes me a freak, or slightly weird, then so be it. And this will be my private little trigger. Ha, trigger. Kind of works with the whole theme, that. Um, but if you like some of the sounds that these make, then um, let me know in a comment. So, you've got that big M24 sniper rifle. Let's bring it a little bit closer to me. I have to be very careful because the mic is now not too far away from me. Okay, so, the sound of the bolt. Trying to make it so the sounds aren't too sharp, which is always the danger with these things. Um, you'll hear a little bit later with the Glock, the sound that the Glock makes is amazing. <clears throat> I was never a fan of Glocks. Um, in fact, this Glock that I have is the newest of all the, uh, the, the the different pieces of equipment that I have. And ever since seeing it on the Matrix Reloaded, Morpheus has one. Just this little pistol with this huge magazine sticking out the bottom of it. And it's firing full auto. I thought they've made that up. But no, it was it was real. And I thought, if I ever, if I ever got one, if I ever got a Glock, that's the Glock for me. You know, balls to the wall, have some of that. And um, then the bad guy, Patrice, has one in Skyfall. And I thought, yeah, definitely got to get one now. <clears throat> so I did, and it was eight. Um, and it is a great little little piece of hardware really it's smaller than the P226 um, but it's done a lot more damage in the time that I've had it <clears throat> sorry I've got a horrible cough right now <clears throat> um, but yeah the, the sound that it makes is amazing it really is I love it a little bit of bits. Um, anyway. Okay, so. If you hear the sound suddenly cut. It's because either someone walked past the house talking extremely loud. Or if just way too much traffic comes past. Because I live um, right on top of one of the roads that leads out of town. So we get a lot of traffic up this way. Anyway. I'm going to put the bolt into the rifle. I don't know if I've the bolt, the magazine into the rifle, sorry. I don't know if I've done this already, but I had to take it out. So here we go. And often, when I'm changing out magazines and this thing, it's because... It only holds 10 rounds, and I normally have to do it in the quiet and very slow, because I'm usually hiding. Playing as a sniper is often very different to playing as a guy with a support weapon, or with just a normal, you know, Weapon like uh, an M4 or you know, that late five or something, or, or an AK, 
you know it's a very different style of play you have to take your time don't just go rushing into stuff Me trying to be all quiet. No, it isn't working. Other factors that you have to take in control or into consideration. Weapon sway. You have to control your breathing as well. So, everyone has their own way of doing it. With me, bolt in, block, select the target, breathe in. Breathe out after you pull the trigger. The thing is with airsoft as opposed to firing the real steel weapon is that you're not firing bullets, you're firing BBs, ball bearings which weigh 0.25 for a gram. This is firing them out almost 100 feet per second wind is an issue if it's too windy you're not going to hit the target you're going to have to compensate you can compensate in different ways you can compensate with heavier ammo so I actually use 0.8 gram PBs <coughs> Heavier, they are heavier. Um, and it increases where it's gonna go, it, it, it sort of stabilizes it and makes it a lot easier to fire. Um, and windage, you know, you can adjust where you're firing, but you've only got 10 rounds per mag, so. By the time you've compensated for wind by firing off a few shots, you've only got a few more shots so that you can get off before your target moves away and you've got to start from scratch. So, I've been lucky that when I have taken this out, there's either been no wind or, you know, it's it's been just an opportune moment where the winds died off <clears throat> I um I think the best shot I ever got on this was we were <laughs> we were storming a position and our guys were getting pounded they, they had some very good places the guys that we were going up against and um, I was using what was I using? I was using an MP9 as my main um, weapon, and I had this just in case. And it I, it was good. It was one of those just in case moments where we needed range, more range than they had. So I set up in a position which they didn't know where I was at. I was in the tree line, they were in the wide open, behind cover. Set up the bipod, and just literally looked down the scope. And I saw this little head pop up. It had a look round, and then it popped back to cover. So I thought, I know where he is now. I'll have him next time he pops up. And I waited a good minute. Got the breathing just right. I said popped up, I pulled the trigger straight off. Buff, right in his forehead. 
<laughs> he had had protective eyewear on. We all have to wear that as part of the rules. But he had this space between his goggles and his hat, and I got right in the right in that space. I know I got him because I saw the words that he mouthed off at me. Um, I'm not going to repeat them. Um, let's just say that they weren't very nice. But he knew that I got him. I knew that I got him. He knew that I I got him. And his mate next to him knew that I got him. Because of the language that was coming out of his mouth. Um, later he did come up to me and say that was a million to one hit. And, and congratulate me on it. And it's probably the best one that I've ever got with it. Um, like I said, the problem with being a sniper is you're that far away. You, know, you can you can hit people sometimes. They won't take the hit because you're so far away. They think, well, he doesn't know that he's got me. Well, I do because I'm looking at you down the scope. So there we go. A few more, a few more of this, I think. I wish I could do this so much better for you. I really do. But the sounds that I'm hearing are probably not the same sounds that you're hearing. I wish I had a way of capturing them a lot better. If you have any hints or tips for me for that, then please share them with me because I want to. I want to get this proper. For me. I want to do it right. That's the trigger. To release the magazine, bolt out, and just in front of the trigger, there's a little button. You press that, and it releases the magazine. Ten rounds, that's all it takes. You compare that to, <clears throat> you know, the big M4s and the M16s and the the LA, uh, the sorry, the uh, L85s, the AKs. You know, their their magazines, their magazines are holding four hundred rounds at least. So four hundred compared to my ten. You know, I better make sure that I get the drop on them. Or I'm in deep doo doo. Now, one more sound that we're going to use for the um, M24. Apart from that one, that was me stroking the butt. That's it, your own joke there. Um. <clears throat> The other sound that I'm going to make with this is attaching the suppressor to the end of the barrel. Now when I got this, um, when I got this M24 it came without the um, the ability to attach the suppressor. Or the silencer, as other people call it. It is there for show. Like I said, silence weapons to me look nastier <clears throat> it, it implies an intent um, now I had to source the part which at the end of the barrel I had to take the end off um, and source a part which was like a little cap that went on the end and it had a threaded end so you could attach the suppressor. Um, and it was like, it's like chicken teeth. So impossible to get my hands on it. It took ages, but I finally managed it. And 
Oh, it's almost one of a kind. Well, it isn't one of a kind, but there's not many like it knocking around. Now, I am actually thinking of selling this purely for the fact that I don't use it that much. Um, <clears throat> and I want the DMR designated marksman rifle, so something like an M16 or an EBR, which will be locked to single shot, but it will be semi. So it'll be a semi-automatic single shot, which means I won't have to worry about the bolt, which means I'll be able to get the shots off quicker, which in turn may mean that I drop more people. Um... I want to get rid of this before I go down that route. These aren't cheap. This one will sell for about 200, maybe 250 pounds with all the added extras. Anyway, here's the suppressor. That's it, it's on the end. Ready for business. The uh, suppressor is by King Arms. Um, and it's been modified. Oh, by modified, it may, I, I basically mean that I dropped it. <laughs> Drops it and ruined the end of it. A little, um, I call it, well, I fixed it. I had to hammer it out, and then it buffed right out. But, um, yeah, it's nice. Um, we found something out about these suppressors, which was if you take the end off, take out all the foam from the inside. It makes a lovely little noise when you pull the trigger. It's like a very high-pitched pop. Um, and we've sort of become notorious in the area that we play in for have for you know towards the end of the day, we all attach suppressors onto our guns and turn them into loudness. Same principle as a sound dog, but the noise that these make just funny and the marshals are like oh my god that sounds awful why aren't we talking about you know exactly where our own team members are when these go off so much traffic brilliant I can actually make a video just with uh, this noise. It's me just stroking the suppressor. So, stroking a long thin black tube and stroking the butt. Yeah, that's what it's coming to, boys and girls. Right then, I'm going to cut this audio and we'll go back to the pistols. Bag. I've moved the Yeti and I've put big headphones on because I can hear it better. This was the suppressor, by the way, which was uh, stroking. There we go. Enough of that now because it looks a bit creepy. So, remember the side arms? We had this P226. It's really slimy. 
with the sound hog. Even has a hog on it. Look at that. Here, yeah, look, piggy with uh, breathing fire. And um, it also has this logo on. Now, P226 um, is the pistol favoured by Navy SEALs, apparently. Not this version of it, though. Um, there's a slightly modified, but it is, it does have a threaded barrel. Um, there we go. So, yeah, that's the inside, by the way. Top of the magazine. Side of the mag being released. Oh, I think I showed you this before, didn't I? You never seen them. Gas in there, BBs down the front. And then completely cock it up. Now, there's a film out there by uh, with John Travolta in it called From Paris with Love. And he has a pistol in that called Mrs. Jones. This is what Mrs. Jones is P226 with a six hour branding on it. Although it's looking backwards here, it may not look backwards on the actual video itself but yeah it's got all the branding on it's great it's my first pistol loved it to bits it goes out with me quite a lot um in fact i was dual wielding this with the block um just a couple of weeks ago uh, again completely different style of play than what i'm used to um i just thought so that it's my birthday i'm going to charge in and um yeah it was great great noises. Not a lot of rattle on this either. At all. Now, compare that. I'm trying to put that over here. To the Glock. It's made by ASG, Action Sport Games. And it's smaller when you compare. In fact, the way of comparing these, probably one in front of the other. Oh, trust me, it's bigger and it feels bigger in the hand as well. In fact, I haven't used the P226 for a couple months because I was getting used to the Glock and the um, I went to pick it up I was like, cranky this P226 is massive compared to the Glock um, yeah it was, it was weird but there we go, anyway Glock 18C. This is a laser sight or laser unit and it's zeroed completely up to where the BBs are going. So I can run into a building, pop that laser on someone's chest, pull the trigger and know that they're going to get a chest full of BBs. <clears throat> now the thing is with the Glock 18C compared to other blocks 
apart from some of the other ones which do this. It's that switch right there. Now, that switch is a selected switch between semi, which it is set to at the moment, and full automatic. When it's like that, it's firing one shot. And it's like that it's firing lots of shots you think you can see there just slightly it's got two little dots I like it when it's on the fun mode which is the multiple one it doesn't have any of the uh, the Grok branding on it though because of uh, licensing issues so uh, yeah it's still pretty though, and the sounds it makes are amazing. I will show you the magazine now. When you get it, it comes with standard magazines which do not come out of the bottom for a lovely little price 50 pounds. You get one like that, which has got 50 rounds in it, and looks sorry, it's still. Got BBs in, very naughty. Keeping BBs in because it can uh, damage the spring, but I'm planning on firing a few off later. So I'll just set it to load so it can come up. And there you can see what it looks like with the extended mag in. There we go, now it is loaded. Well, it's not loaded, but that's what it looked like. The noises. Beautiful. Oh, it's the clicking. I love the sound of the click. that crack at the end, beautiful. Now, it's constructed slightly different to the other ones because it's got metal um, top frame, top slide, and it's got a polymer lower. Um, actually, it's interesting, there was a video on Reddit just the other day describing the decockers on um, on pistols and what they do basically you can cock a weapon it's ready to go and you can release the hammer and it not go off the P P226 has one of these there so pull back that and it's ready to go it will need the slightest of touch and it will go off So it's like that, ready to go, and I don't want it to fire. That switch there will release the hammer. Now it's going to be loud, but that didn't fire. It just released that, and it's a double action um, trigger. So it goes back so far, and it needs a little bit more just to fire it off as before. Notice that bit there. Okay, so I'll just show that again. You've got that movement. Done that to shoot it. Pull the hammer back. And it takes care of that first action. So we just need the slightest pull. But say you pull back the hammer and you don't want to fire it. It releases it, makes it slightly safer. Yeah. The block safety feature is a little different. Just take the magazine out. It 
Sinä. Ja. If I get pencil, which I haven't got right now, so I shall use an Allen wrench to demonstrate. Clock's in the holster. So it pulls against the trigger, and it can't. It can't fire. This is so amateurish. It's brazen. It can't fire. Because you have to depress this first portion of the trigger. That bit right there. Before it can fire. So that's the clock. Safety feature. Nice fail as well. So we'll just place that. Cock it. I fire it. That's what it sounds like. It's a cocky nose, I like. There we go. That's right. another safety. And that's switching the front switch into the middle. It won't. You can depress the trigger, but nothing would happen anyway. Yeah. So the odds are that this video wasn't too relaxing anyway, but this might show and tell video, so there we go. I'm going to leave it at that because I think you've probably either A, heard enough of me, seen enough of me, and yeah, there we go. I play airsoft. Um, that's my hobby. If you ever get a chance to play, play it. It's so much fun. Um, It is a really fun game. I've met some brilliant people playing it as well. Um, so yeah, there we go. I'm going to do a proper equipment video at some point. Or I'm going to show you the, the clothes that I wear and the kit that I take with me in terms of the, um, the bike carry vest and um, also probably show you some of the other weapons that I've got, including the M4, the UMP, an MP5, SD6, and um, the shotgun that I have, which is great because it does actually fire groups of BBs all at once. And yeah, there we go. That's a uh, that's me done for this video. I think if you have found any relaxation from it, then that's amazing. That's that's more than I expected. Thank and, and thank you. If you've watched it and thought this isn't very relaxing, then I'm sorry. But I realise halfway through this probably won't be a relaxing video anyway. Um. Probably boring for a lot of you, so if that's done the trick for you, then that's all good. Um, 
Till next time. I don't know when it will be or what it will be. Probably a meditation or a singing or a ramble or something. Um, until then, have a great, great rest of the week. Sweet dreams, many tingles, uh, be good to yourselves and uh, those around you. Also, tune into Bedtime Radio every Wednesday night, 7pm, because I'm on. Look it up. Cheers. Bye.